things at the end of this, and um, we're gonna use some stencils. As you can see up here, I'm gonna use some stencils. And if you look on the upper left and uh, uh, upper left and the bottom left, you'll see what I had done this afternoon. And those are the paintings that I had done um, with the abstract background. And so you can see right here, I used a stencil and then here I used a stencil. And this one I did realistically. So um, you can still do it realistically like the photo that I had um, sent you guys or that you picked up on my website. You can do it that way. But as you can see in my, in my painting here, I'm leaving the background alone. I'm leaving, I didn't draw anything on there because I wanted to make it more of an abstract. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to go right to our tabletop and get going here. And also, or I mean, just put the supplies up here just for a second, just so anybody can know. We're going to be using a Mr. Magic Eraser. That's one of the things I have new here. We're going to be using uh, Mr. Magic Eraser to use with the stencils, and I'll show you how to do that. And also, where I get my stencils, I just want to put this up here really quickly, is that I get them from stencilgoproducts.com. So if you want to get that, um, those are that's where I get my stencils, and you can get some small. I think they're five by five, and then some fourteen by fourteen stencils. They're a little bit bigger or 12 by 12. I look on their site at stencilgoproducts.com. I don't represent them or anything. Um, I just use some of their stencils they gave me at one time. And they're a real good company. I know there's another company out there that also sells stencils. I forgot what that was, some kind of crafting thing. And um, But that's where I get my stencils. And later on, I'll show you a few of them that I get. All right, let's get going here. And so here's um, my drawing. I already put my eraser. I erased over it with my eraser. A lot of times, again, if you're ever doing, and these are all for all newcomers, if you're using a, um, and you have a lot of um, pencil lines on there, and you wanna take some of the erasing and, and just roll over with Nita Rubber Eraser, to get some of the graphite off. So if you want a nice um, bright color, like this is gonna be yellow, I don't want that gray in there. So I kind of run over with my Nita Rubber Eraser. I stretch it out and clean it every once in a while. And then I put it underneath my paper here so you can see it on an angle. So it doesn't reflect anyways too. <laughs> All right, so let's get going here. I want to let me just show you the paintings beforehand what I'm gonna be doing here. Sorry again. So this is what is gonna be realistically done. See, this is what's like like the photograph was. This is the one I wore. I did um, a little abstract background on it. And at first it looked like tire tracks like running over the thing, but then it kind of had to get a look of a wheat. And so today I use this, looks more like a barbed wire fence or not barbed wire, but like a chicken fence, but um, wire fencing. But I don't like this one as much as I did like this one. And so I may use some of the different um, stencil on this one, but you can tell I rubbed out here. I rubbed out and to get that effect. And so it's more of like an abstract background. And I'm gonna try to do it a little bit differently again on this one. So again, realistic. And these were two abstract kind of backgrounds where I don't just make it up as I go along here. I do follow the value study because if you look at the picture, up in the upper left is a little bit darker and over on this side is a little bit darker. So I'm gonna make that um, a darker area. But let's get going with the, um, I'm gonna go right with the um, rooster right from the get go. I'm gonna get all my lights. And I'm going to go in there and just kind of, I didn't clean my palette, so I figure I might as well use that paint again for this, from this afternoon. So in this area right here, I'm going to start with my lights. And so I'm going to go right into my, into my yellow. And let me look up real quick just to see if you guys have any questions. Uh, the sound is good. Okay, sound is good. Uh, all right. Sorry about that, about this echo. Again, I have to figure out what that is. <laughs> Oh, there's a, oh, I see what it is. Okay, I got that. So, um, and I also got here. Okay. Any questions? And so if we get the questions later on, Jake, put them up there and I will, um, Gary will probably tell them to me. And so Gary's here today again. And so here we go with the yellow and I'm going to go right into some of the red right underneath here. And if you want to find this, some people keep on asking me, where do I get the um, reference? Go to my website. It's on my website. Here I'm using some Scarlet Lake and some Brilliant Orange to go right into the red. Right into the... And also I, uh, I bought a... Um, at Goodwill today I bought a new blank... Not blank, it's a new towel. A nice white towel. And so it's all nice and white. And I like it because I, I love being able to just put it anywhere. So, so I'm going to wash the other one because that was getting pretty filthy. But here I just go in here and I'm just going to put the red right into this comb. Hey, that's a comb. I'm not sure what's underneath what they call that. The gobble gobble thing. <laughs> and so we're in here going to the side here. Get the red in there. And this is just the lights. Again, I'm not creating shapes yet. I'm just kind of getting the lights. 
the colors that and uh, that he is. And then we're going to go in here, put some gold. And I'm not going to go into the background with it. I'm kind of sticking right there. Again, I'm going to make this darker, but I'm, you know, it's it's easy enough to just go right to that edge. And so then right over here, it looks like there's a little bit of, let me put these up here so I can see what I'm doing. And I got a reference here. So I get the reference and I can see exactly what I'm doing. So here we have a little bit of orange going through here, a little bit of yellow, and I'm not wetting the paper first. Not wetting the paper first. I am, um, cause I want the hard edge. I want the hard edge inside here when it's wet, then I, I float pigment into that area. And that's where I get the soft edges and I get the nice uh, look of, oh, also another thing when I, I forgot to mention is that in my drawing, I added like two new feathers on the top. If you look at the, if you look at the photo, uh, these feathers are like hanging down here. I put two more, one up here and a smaller one there just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. You know, this rooster's got pizzazz, so we're going to put a little more pizzazz in him. I got to get a drink here. <laughs> oh, boy, did you hear that? So, Flamingo Dreams Night Show. Cheers, everybody. Ah, it comes from Colorado. This is beer comes from Colorado. Flat something burg or something like that, Colorado. Every week we're going to find a new beer from some, from some state that we're gonna use. So this is the beer of the night, Flamingo Dreams Nitro. Okay, so we had this going here. Come in here and just get this nice, he's got this nice golden um, thing. I think a little yellow, a little orange and make a gold. Or I can use Quinacridum Gold also over here. Get a little bit of that in there. And just kind of come down and get the light parts again always light to dark you know that already i know you know that because i do it every week light to dark and then we come up here and there's this little bit of white up there and then um go right into his legs and i'm just going to use um some of the dirty dirty um pigment i had here from some of the blue and orange that gives me kind of a gray and a warm gray down here for his legs I didn't realize they have this little, on the back of his, he's got those little spikes in the back of his leg. I didn't know that roosters had those. I have seen them in um, Key West when I went down to Key West last year. But they were really beautiful running around down there. And so this one, and this picture, uh, which also comes from, I think, unsplash.com, but um, it's like he's on a golf course, so I don't want to make it that that smooth and that realistic. Like, so if you're going to do it realistic, I would even even if you did it like the photograph, don't put it in such nice you know area. Put it more in like a he's in a coop or something with a lot of uh, things happening in there. All right, and so now we're going to go into the um, teal over here because this again is the light. This is going to be darker in here later for his chest, and so that I don't have to get right now. That's going to come later with my darks, but I'm just getting my lights of the tail feathers. And again, I added two tail feathers. I added two tail feathers on this one compared to the photo, which I like to do, change things up sometimes if I need them to do that. If I need to have it different because it makes it better looking, then do that. Don't have to follow the photograph to a perfect T. Now, if you want to make him a little bit more abstract too, you can do that later when you're doing the stenciling and stuff. I can change things around, but first I'm going to make them kind of more realistic and then I can abstract them up a little bit. Like I can put like different things in them, different shapes and different triangles or something like that. But right now I'm just getting the big basic colors right now. You can also abstract the color. Maybe you make colors that are not there, you know, and just make it, maybe make a really interesting rooster that has super, super fluorescent kind of colors. Or they call them bright colors. Those, those. Um, I forget what they call those colors. So oh, I'm going to orange. I'm still doing the teal. So I'm doing teal. I mean, I know those feathers are really dark. The, the dark. They're um, pretty much. I might look at this here so you guys can see it. Well, you guys see it up there on the, on the screen. So um, they're they're very dark. But again, I'm not doing my darks yet. I will get my darks later. I'm still getting my lights. Hey everybody, hey Sonia, hey Lynn, hey Rita, hey Martina, Mel, Mary, Marianne, Maura, Sue, 
What else we got up there? And Billy, thanks a lot for showing up. Thanks a lot for coming and painting with me, or just watching at least. And thanks for all the people who come and um, and then paint it later and show it to me on Facebook. We've got some really nice stuff coming on Facebook. So if you do paint it, please post it on Facebook, on my Facebook page. Love to see it. And everybody else who actually paints it likes to see it too. Here I'm putting a little bit darker of this um, tur teal kind of color. I'm just going to put that in there first. I'll get it darker again. Like I said, I'll get it later. Right now I'm just wanting to... And I make my own... Um, kind of teal color by using this um, horizon blue and I add a little bit of yellow to it. And so I kind of go in there. All right, so now let me go with a smaller brush. I want to go in here and just get some of this red of the, I know I shouldn't be probably doing this right now, but I just feel like I have to. I want to go in here and just kind of get my small brush and get his comb. Oh, his comb happening here. A little yellow in there again um i'm gonna get i mean i'm using my smaller brush i just feel like i want to put that in just because i know i'm not going to do anything with the sky up there i'm gonna leave that white and so this will give me an idea of what the, the brightest red this is going to be the brightest red so i want to get that in there already even the, uh, his eyes are like orangey red and then there's a little bit of a cheek right here like a little bit of yellow I just want to get that in there just because I do. I mean, if you don't want to do it until later, that's fine. I just feel like I want to get that in there before I have too much of this Flamingo Dream Nitro, right? <laughs> mm. Oh, that's good. Okay, so now we're going to go into the background. So I got that's pretty much enough for, the, for his face in there. And so now let's go into the background right away. So the background, um, I could use my big brush, but I'm going to use my big round because i got to kind of go around this area. And if you look at what I did this afternoon, um, I wet the surface right here and I kept that all soft edged. And I got kind of a grayish, you know, purplish color. I didn't quite know what colors to use back there. And I actually didn't like how this came out with the stencils. But because um, I put too much of the stencils on, you can see I did a little wiping out with the uh, magic eraser. But this one is going to be a little bit different. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet as I go along. Again, I like doing that where I wet as I, I go along. I just take water, wet the area, wet as I go along. And then I do want to, to make this dark because in my value study of the, of the photo, it is dark back there. So whatever you do, just make it the darkness. I don't care what color you use there. You can use whatever color you like. I mean, there's a lot of colors in here, so you kind of, kind of could, kind of go with what's there as complement or, or not. You know, just make it dark, make it dark. And you know how much I like purple, and so of course purple is going to be in mine. And get some orange in there to make it kind of a brown. And so, um, if you want to make a tree, like it is, it is trees back there. Um, you can do that too. You know, you can make it green. I just don't feel like. Um, I want to make it green. I just, it's not one of my favorite colors. So you do what you want. You do what makes you feel happy about the painting. As long as you get the values, worry about the values. So important, the values. So here I'm taking clean water, kind of going up to there. I'm not going to do this area here because that's going to stay white. And so I'm just going to go up close to there. And actually my, the comb on his head is wet still. So I want to stay away from that anyways. Come down here, and it's kind of like I'm putting in my dark already, but it is a big area, so it's okay to start my darks. It's just part of the dark area that's the background. And I went to some Scarlet Lake, I went some purple, and then some orange, like the sun. Maybe the sun's back here. And maybe make some yellow back there too. And I just kind of make it go from a light to a dark. And that's a cool thing, right? And so I'll come over here, go on his back. And then they'll make his back pop, help pop forward by making this part a little bit darker too. So that's a cool thing, making it dark right here, makes him pop forward. And um, I probably should have started down here so that I don't, not jumping back and forth. That's kind of a bad thing to do is jump back and forth. But now I'm done with this area and later on I will make that look like that on this side of him. So, um, so that's okay, but now I'm going to go fit quickly into this area so I don't keep that hard edge right there. 
So always watch how you're, you know, where you're, where you're going. If you don't want a hard edge on some spot, you gotta make sure you wet it a little bit farther ahead. So I'm gonna come, come over here, take some dark blue, some violet, and just kind of brush it in there really nice and dark. And as I come down, as I come down here, it's just gonna get lighter and lighter. If I wanted to make these feathers like soft edge, I can do it now still. Like, let's say I want to make this one a little bit softer edge. I'll just go in with a damp brush and just pull that kind of soft, you know. Um, but I'm going to keep them, I'm going to keep them hard edge because he's forward and it'll be fine. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to take a little bit of orange in here and wet as I go along. Wet as you go along. Any questions, just make sure you ask them. I'm, I'm looking up once in a while. Or like I said, Gary will let me know if you ask a question. He's in the studio. Gary's an awesome watercolors himself. And so we're gonna come down here and just make it from a, from a dark to a light. I notice this one's getting a little bit, um, and also I want it dark so that when I put a stencil, I'm gonna be lifting out. So that's kind of cool too. So I'm not gonna do the foreground yet. I'm just gonna kind of get in here and get these parts that are um, important to this area of light to dark. And so there's a little bit of background showing through here. And now I'm gonna come over this side and totally um, make this wet. I'm see, I'm making it wet so that when I put my wash on it, it's gonna give you a soft edge. For all the beginners out there, you use water to soften your edges. You don't do, you don't have to smudge it or smear it or, you know, you just let it, let it soften itself. I'm going to use the same colors on this side that I used, and I'm going to use the same colors on this side that I used on this side. I try to remember that. And they actually, they're probably in your palette sitting there. So I use a little bit of orange right up here. So I might as well use a little bit of that right here. And in my value study, or I didn't make a value study, but the photo I use as a value study. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of putting that is the, my light area. That's light up there. And so I'm kind of going over here. Let's get that soft. And as you come down, I'm getting darker and darker. I'm not getting as dark as this area because it isn't like that in the photo is dark. And there's actually a tree over there, but I'm just going to make it um, abstract. So I don't want to have a, put anything like a tree over there. I'm just going to put a little bit of dark right here. Blend it into the foreground. And then I don't have to worry about going in this area because that's gonna be really dark. So don't worry about that, like his, his breast of him, you know, his chest, just to go right in there. Don't worry about that because it's gonna be darker. So I'm just gonna put that in like this, put a little bit of warmth in there. And then for down here, it's gonna be dark around his legs so I can go through that. I do have to go, um, no, I don't have to go around his legs. I can just do a light behind his legs and the shadow underneath there. So what I'm going to do now is just wet this down here, but I'm not going to wet it all evenly. I'm going to make it really um, rough. So I'm going to go through here and pick up some of the texture of the paper because I want this to be like a little rougher, not even spatter it. Look at this. You know, this is a chicken coop or it's not going to be clean. Like, you, ooh, nobody cleaned it. So I'm going to go in here and make some, make, make a mess basically. Put some yellow in there. Go right through his body. His legs are going to be dark. And so I can just go right through that. Now watch out maybe for a little bit of this. I don't want to go through there as much. So I'm going to take and kind of be a little bit more careful over here. Up here. I'm going to make that darker anyways, but I'm just going to um, be a little bit more careful with the green. I don't want the yellow and the green. And so now, again, come down here, make this a light area. And I like the spatter. And what I do is I take my finger and I just whip it across. If you don't want something to get wet or something, then just lay something over that. Well, I can't because it's wet, but you can just um, kind of bring it down here. And so you're just getting me, make it a little nice and messy. That was a little spatter. And later on, I can also put a little bit of a mess down there with the stencil. Uh, part of the stencil could be down there. There's gonna be a shadow here anyways, but I'm using the texture of the paper to give me some texture. By just roughly going across it quickly hitting the paper here. Okay, so that's nice and I wanna keep this light area here, a little bit of yellow here. I wanna, I'm keeping this light so that when his chest will really come forward and it'll just push it forward, the whole, the whole 
rooster will come forward there. So up here it's starting to dry and it's giving me a hard edge because my water is kind of dirty. So I'm just going to go up here and just kind of take it and take a piece of paper towel. So there is times to use paper towel when you have, or, or a towel like the wash, either one. I'm just going to go over here and just kind of soften that edge and get rid of the hard edge line. Because you'll still get a hard edge line if the, if, even if you have tinted water like that. If you wanted to do like an abstract thing now where you're taking out like some of the, um, let's say you're taking out some of the paint, you can do that too. You know, but I'm going to leave it soft and smooth. Now I'm going to use some of these stencils. And I'll show you later how to use a stencil and put it on top to create some different shapes and stuff. Uh, right now I'm going to have to um, dry this. And so I'm going to turn off your volume just for a second. And um, I'm going to dry this really quickly. And then we'll get going on our darks. All right. So let me just turn you guys off so you don't have to hear this. Even though this one's not too loud. Uh, um, So somebody had asked me what this is. This is um, this is not really a hair dryer. It's an embossing embossing heat tool. No, you sure? Yeah, I'm on now. So for anybody that doesn't know, or somebody that asked what it is I'm using, it's not a hair dryer. It's a um, embossing heat tool, which I'm not sure what they use it for. <laughs> embossing, I guess. Uh, I've never done embossing, so I found this at an art store, and I thought it's really warm, really hot, and so it doesn't make as loud a noise. So I thought I like that a little bit better. So we shut it off. I'm going to shut it off. I think we got good enough. Okay, so you guys, can hear me again? All right. So. Um, we're going to go in here now and we're going to just go in there and get our darks. Um, real simple, go and look at the photo, see what the photo has for its darks. And um, just start, I'm going to start right here and I'm going to go right into the dark on his little cone. Yeah. What's that? You're good. I'm good? Okay, you can hear me good, good, good. So I'm going to go in here and get the part of the rooster. The gobble gobble part. <laughs> so we're just gonna go in here. And as you come down, we're gonna get some really dark darks. And I'm using my smaller brush, smaller round, because I wanna get some really details in here. So I don't, I'm not gonna use a big brush that I can't handle. So I always use the brush that best fits the purpose for what you're doing. Maybe I'll use my half inch. I, I really enjoy my flat brushes. I'm not sure why. I just like the fact that they make a really soft, hard edge. I mean, a hard edge, not a soft, hard edge. It's done it there. So we're just going to put it, start with a dark. And I started with a um, imidazolone brown, and then I put a little bit of purple in there. But once I put it down and it becomes wet, then I decide um, what other colors to put in there. So um, first I'll just go down here. And to make it look more like feathers, I'm kind of, like, say I'm kind of doing this, going back and forth. Just kind of putting it on there, but it ends up being wet, and then I can take other colors like this orange. Look at this, I can just pop that orange in there. Let me show you closer up if you can see. See how the orange gets in there? It kind of it goes into the dark. Oh, so this is wet, so you're gonna get a really soft edge. See that? See, that's nice. I like that. It's okay to get that um, because it is wet, and that's how you get soft edges, right? And so feathers are soft, and so that's that's fine. Leave that alone. Don't don't worry about that. If you get a little bit of um, the softness and stuff, that's fine. You're gonna make this a little bit red, and then we got this coming over here. It's a little bit darker. Um, so Ginny asked me um, if they did a realistic rooster several years ago, if they can do it um, with stencils later. Yes, absolutely. And I'll show you how to do that at the end. Um, yeah, you definitely can do that. Definitely, definitely. So 
putting the red in there. And at the same time, while I'm putting this red, it's going to show the, um, the feathers that are light by negative painting around those feathers. So the top feathers become feathers by doing the dark underneath them. And then even a darker color underneath the red will make those look like feathers. So it's like that's where the negative painting comes in really well. And negative painting is painting around the object to create the object. Like that's going to be negative painted because you're painting the dark around it to create the shape of that object. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue, the lighter blue here, and we're just going to kind of come in here. And I'm wetting as I go along. Again, it's not wet in some spots, and so I'm wetting as I go along. And when you wet as you go along, then I pop in other colors once it's wet, and then I let them float. And like my hat that Tom had given me, and from Ann Arbor, what is it? Ann Arbor T-shirt company. <laughs> if you ever want to get it, go um, back in the video and you'll see what what the address is there. Ann Arbor Tees, I think dot com. You can get yourself some float your pigment, float your pigment um, T-shirts or hats or whatever you want on there. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go down here. And I'm just picking up some purples and blues and dark browns. I'm going across here. And so here's his wing. Let me see. Okay, we're going to go back here. And again, you know how I don't look at the photo that often after I'm actually drawing it. I kind of um, make things up as I go along. And as long as you get the drawing there, I mean, just follow your drawing. You know that part has to be dark. So you look maybe basically for the lights and darks in the photo. But if there's like, you know, feathers you want to put in, extra feathers, or make it maybe, it looks like he's running. Like you can even put motion in there by just blurring it. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to be a slave to the photo. Just keep on, you know, make it what you want it to be. And even the colors, let's say you want, maybe you want a green rooster do whatever you want a teal green that's fine you make it your rooster cheers flingo dreams <laughs> mm. so let's see you go back here there's a dark right here how much time do we have let's seven we still got half an hour so we're good we're good i'll make sure i have enough time to show you how to do all the stencils even though the stencils takes about five minutes to do it's very simple when we get to the stencil part or abstracting it up very simple so i mean i'm not really abstracting the background is kind of abstract right now but we're going to do even more than that and some people even like to abstract parts of the of the animal or the object so you can do that too you know but um that, that comes later so now i'm coming in here with a nice dark blue and if i want to make it more teal blue i'll stick in a little bit of connectum gold to make it a little green so a darkish greenish blue. I'm just gonna come in here and and the colors I use for anybody who's never been with my class is I use Holbein colors. And Holbein, I use them only because they don't dry out. They don't dry out because they don't have oxgall in them. What is oxgall? It's a it's a, some kind of material that comes from a, a gall. From an ox, I mean it's a gall from an ox. <laughs> So um, yeah, they, I don't know who who invented that. You know, go to that gall, go to that ox over there and take his gall and um, ox gall. And it's supposed to be for keeping the pigment more transparent. But um, the way we use this paint, you don't need to have um, that substance in there to get the make it look um, uh, transparent. You just use a lot of water and you float your pigment. That's how you get your nice transparencies even with colors that are opaque with white in them they will look transparent if you use a lot of water and let them float i have white on my palette i can even make white look transparent because i float it into my i float my pigment into the water i'm going in to get some any more questions no questions come on people give me some questions come on artists you know Now's the time to ask me. Let me know the questions you have. So I can do something in the painting to show you if you have a certain question. No. So.
So this is a little bit too, no, that's okay. I thought it maybe a little bit too white. There is a little bit of white on the back of his tail here where it starts. And so that can be, I can put a little dark in there. Make this a little bit darker. Again, you're not gonna see these feathers in the picture because I made them up. So sometimes when you're making things up, you, you can't look to your photo to find out what, what is happening there. You gotta, if you're making it up, you gotta kind of make it up on your, the whole thing. So look at the other feathers and just kind of figure out what's happening there from the other feathers, basically what you do. And so I like this one to come down. And I keep on looking at my photo going, oh, wait, where's that? No, oh, it's not there. <laughs> so I have to make that up. So here you go. And then we've got this really dark right here. So Now his beak, I have just solid white, but in the photo, it's pretty much um, white also, but it has a little bit of um, gradation on the top of it. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm just going to put it on the side a little bit when I get my smaller brush though. Now, right now with this big brush, I'm still going here and getting some of these feathers here. Get some red ones here. Go up into the... So I guess it is realistic until I get to the point where it becomes a little bit more abstract, the background. And I even take some of the abstract into the, into the rooster later on too. As you can see with this one, I had it done before. Just show you, see how I went into the rooster or some of this stuff. I kind of go into the feathers and stuff with certain abstract um, the stencil part. All right, so that looks pretty good for the. Let me get my smaller brush to do his beak and maybe his, go around and get his um, head a little bit more. Let's see, he has a little bit more dark right underneath the beak here, underneath the top part of his eye. I think he's got a. a black around his eye. I get this going down here. Got little feathers coming off of here that are a little bit red. All right, so now a little gray. So gray, look in your palette. There's a bunch gonna be a bunch of gray in your palette because if you're using blues and oranges and yellows, you're gonna have some gray there. You don't have to have to actually have a color gray. And if you don't, just go into um, your your lavenders, your purples, and mix them with a little bit of yellow, and you'll get a great gray, gray. Or orange and, well, orange and blue mix mostly browns, though. So you want to kind of go with the gray. Or I have gray, gray on gray. I have all these grays in the corner here. We actually just buy a gray or neutral tint, which is a lot of the artists are using nowadays is the neutral tint. All right, so let's get his legs a little bit darker. Well, that's, that's what wait on that because I want to do the shadow on the floor first. So let's get the shadow on the floor on the ground. I'm sure that it's more of a ground than a floor. And so we're going to go here and just make it dark. What color you use, it all depends on what you um, put down first. Like I didn't put anything color there. It was more white there. So for that, you can put any color. White, you can use any shadow color you want for white. If it was like a more of a warm green, I mean a warm color, then just a darker, warmer color. Like if it's an orange, then just make it darker, more darker orange. If it was blue, then make it darker blue. But with white, you can pretty much use any color you want for the shadow because there is no color in there. So you just kind of go in there with a, you can use gray, but I can use any color I want in there. I can use a really bright blue even. It really doesn't matter if it's white. It's one of those rules that I, I figured out one time it's like it's the only kind of thing that you can make any shadow color you want you can also put reflected color in there like from here there's a purple I can reflect it back into there that's cool but um again any other any color you want on white for shadows there's a little shadow underneath them now and you see how I broke it up I didn't make a big big long line because there's gonna be dappled light hanging all over here and look at this little um, I did these water droplets marks they look great especially for like a chicken coop, you know, it's not going to be clean and perfect. Mess it up a little bit. And you can also spatter it again. Now I'm going to go with my small round. I'm going to get these legs. I'm going to get his legs up there a little bit more. Taking some of the darks from my palette. And um, the, the light is coming from above. So he's, he's pretty much totally in um, shadow these legs. But that doesn't mean you have to do it totally that way. If you want to make a little bit of the edge, the edge be a little bit light, that's fine too. 
but I'm gonna keep the, this part light on the bottom only because I have put a dark there already. I'm gonna put this in here. And same thing here, I'm gonna make it dark. Just picking up some dark color, not exact color. Okay, there's the bottom of his foot. I know he's got claws probably, but this is messy down there, so I'm just gonna keep it messy. And that's good enough, messy. Behind his neck here, a little dark. The next thing is gonna be some detail for his tail feathers, just because there's, I notice there's a little bit of, like the feathers that are feathered. There's a little line down the middle of the feather. And so I'm gonna make it look like a feather by taking some of those things that are details and just put a few of them in there. You don't have to do a lot. And same thing when it comes to the stencils. Um, I did too many in the beginning um, this afternoon. I made this whole painting, this chicken wire looking thing, and it looked terrible. So I wiped out this whole area, I wiped out this area, wiped out over here, and I took away what I had put in with all the stencils. So when you're gonna do the stencils later, it has to be very, very minimal. You don't wanna go crazy with the stencils. It just takes away from what you already put down. All this beautiful stuff you put down, it takes away from that. So the back of the rooster's head will make it a little bit darker. Again, this is not details, this is definitely details right before I start doing the, the stencils. Pretty much want to have the rooster done before you get into the stencils. Everett has a question. Okay, when do you know when you are finished? Oh boy, that's the that's the, that's the question, right? <laughs> um, I always find that um, I go through the area and I finish every area to that point, whatever. Like the background is done, the rooster's done, and I get it all done. And so I never go back into an area. So when that area is done, it's done. So the last part that you did was these legs, and pretty much I don't see any more details. So. I take it stage by stage. And so if I'm doing a background to foreground to detail, once I get that detail done, I'm done. Uh, it's that, that simple. I, I keep it to where um, you don't go, it's not like an oil painter who goes back and forth with everything. With watercolor, it's pre-planned. You have to know what you're doing, the background first, lights to dark, um, back to front, um, you know, and then detail at the end. And so when you're done with details, depending on how detailed you get, you're done. Um, some people are very detailed and they're um, to where it's like photographic even and they would be done when their last little little piece is done so it's pretty simple if you do if you follow your plan of attack you know if you're doing it where you do the big areas first and get down to detail so when you're done with your details you're done okay so that's pretty much the rooster itself without anything in the background. No, no. Um, you could keep it like this and you can maybe even put stuff in there um, that makes it look more realistic. I could put like a fence, I could put chicken wire to make it more of a realistic painting. But I want to show you how to make it more like a design sense. And why do you would, um, so when I've shown people these two paintings, I've shown people these two paintings and this is, I have in my classes, when I teach my classes, I, I've never sold these because of that. Um, this one and this one, I show them. Both are great paintings. I mean, they're not great, but they're, <laughs> they're both paintings. <laughs> and um, this one is more realistic, like the photo was, and this one was not realistic. It had these um, things that looked like road tracks at first, uh, but then they started looking more like wheat or hay or whatever. They, they kind of give a feel of like a field and stuff. And that's more of a design sense. And um, most people I ask like this one better than this one. And so, um, and why is that? I'm not sure why that is. It just has a more of a design sense and it's more artistic, I think, or more, more creative, I think. And so this could say like that, it could be a picture of a rooster on a, on a ground in a field and you don't even know what's back there, um, but that's fine. You could also put trees back there, but if you want to make it more um, abstract, I use these stencils. And again, I get the stencils at stencilgirl.com. Let me just show you that one more time so you have it stencilgirlproducts.com. That's where I get them. See, you write that down, Stencil Girl Products. They sell them really, um, I think it's about 14 bucks for a big one and seven bucks for a small one. But um, they're kind of neat. So this, they're very um, organic. I mean, look at this. It's like, this is the one I got from a Trish, Trish McKinney, I think is her name. I saw her at an expo and she was at the expo next to me. And she had given me this one and told me about stencilgirls.com. 
And so if you don't have stencils, um, look around your house. There's probably something that has holes in it or um, you can cut stencils out of stencil material. You can buy them at like Hobby Lobby, uh, Michaels. They're kind of expensive online or at like those places. And um, as you can see, I have this one. This one, this is the one that I used for this. For the, see how it's right? It kind of is, goes in the, this part. And so here I put in, and uh, here I'm gonna take out. So to put in watercolor, and this is a stencil, remember, and so I can't use water because <laughs> it'll go underneath there. So what you're gonna do is this magic eraser. Um, you don't have to get a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. They also have ones like at the dollar store. It's just a white um, kind of sponge. And um, this is, it happens to be the Magic Eraser. But what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to, you have to kind of look at, the, at your painting and figure out what kind of things you kind of think you would like in there. What is it, what, maybe it's triangles, you know, is it, would triangles look good in there? And this is kind of a good thing to try on some old paintings first. Like if you have an old painting that you're not going to do anything with, or like I have loads of them that I'm going to be showing you how to do things with them. But, um, and especially to see how to do it, you know, don't do it on a really great painting because you can ruin the whole painting that you just did and you can just ruin it like in five minutes. <laughs> so uh, what I do is I kind of look at it and I kind of put it on there like this and I kind of picture it like if it's going to be darker, this area would have to be darker or you can make it lighter. So this is a light area. So I could pull out some of this area if I want triangles. This is what I used for this afternoon for the chicken wire. And so I put it down and I just rub it, rub it with the uh, magic eraser. Now the magic eraser just has to be damp. It cannot be wet. It has to be damp. So when I put it into there, I take it out and I squeeze all the water out and I just make it damp. I'm just going to take away um, paint from the paper or I'm going to put in with the, with the um, magic eraser with the magic eraser by dipping into the paint and just dabbing it down. I know they make stencil brushes where you put it down there. I don't have one of those, but I find this to be just as good. And so I'm gonna use this more um, wild crazy stencil this time. And um, I have loads of them and they come in, like I said, I think 12 by 12. And then if you ever take one of my classes, you're allowed to use any one of them. And I have a, I put them in a stamping up folder, you know, or memory, memory book. And I just, um, have all kinds of different, see that that's a stencil, a stencil of branches. I mean, it kind of, I could use that one maybe on there. Um, but you just have to kind of go through it and test those things on paint on paintings that you've never used before or that you don't want, you don't care about, <laughs> but see, I'm gonna go like this and I'm going to rub out at first. I'm going to rub out. So I'm just going to take it real quickly. I'm just going to rub out. And my, my, my brush is, my brush, my um, sponge is just very lightly damp. It's not wet. If you make it too wet, you're going to go underneath the stencil. And that's when I, you don't want that. You just want to take it in here like this and you're rubbing off some of the paint. And it's, I hold it up like this. See, watch this. I have a little bit of a mystery branch back there or something. And so I kind of like that. And so I'm going to go here and do a little bit more right here. I'm just taking it off with the magic eraser. Magic eraser, you can get at Jewel or any of your um, grocery stores. They're called Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. And so now I have that there. And so now I can maybe have the feathers come over and give, give it kind of a look, kind of a look. And again, I'm taking paint out. So I'm getting rid of some of the um, darkness. So that may not be a good thing over here. But I'm going to try anyways, <laughs> just because I think it's going to be a good thing. Hopefully. Uh, let's see. Like I said, you could ruin your painting in like two seconds. So it's good to kind of experiment first and try to figure out if you can do it and how it's going to look. But I'm just going to take it and I place it on a dry paper. Also, as a matter of fact, your paper's got to be dry when you're doing this. And so I'm just pulling out the paint afterwards. And so I get that out there. That's not bad. That's okay. I'm going to take a little bit more of this out here. Take it all the way down then so it looks like it's coming in there. And basically, again, my brush is damp. It's not wet. It's just very damp. And so there's a little thing going happening there. And then let's put a little bit of this on his back. And so I'm going to take this roundness. Oh boy, I'm not sure if I like that. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens here. I'll take it off his back here. A little bit of this. 
to too much. Mm. That's the hard part, just trying to figure out what, oh, here we go. Let's just try this. A little bit of the waves going this way. It is abstract, and so, you know, you just make it a nice design. Make it a nice design. I think that's okay. And so, um, and the one thing you don't want to do is use different stencils in one painting. Stick with the one stencil. Don't, I've done that before. It doesn't work. Like, I can't all of a sudden now use this one on there. It just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't blend. It doesn't work. Um, so stick with the same design that you're going with and follow through with the whole stencil. You can um, put in, like I could put in things. I, so let me just show you. I have to show you that too. And so um, maybe we put some of this down here and we're gonna make this area dark. Like this is the shadow part. And so I'm gonna take this stencil. And I will also show you later on how to put this on another sheet of paper. I'll show you how to put it on there too. And so here I'm gonna take my palette and I'm gonna take a little bit more of the paint but now this is wet, so you gotta squeeze a little bit of the water out and keep the keep the paint in there. So you even dip into like um, your pure pigment and then just dab it down. Because again, if you take up too much water, it's gonna get underneath your stencil, and that's not a good thing. So here I'm just gonna be painting with a with a with a sponge. You can use your brush too, but you have to make it damp. So I'm gonna take all the water off of it, take a lot of paint, and then just go over it lightly. It's almost like a dry brush. And you'll see you'll have a little bit of this little lines there too. I'll do it over here too. Let's see, I'm gonna get these little lines. And we're lightly gonna brush over. Again, no water, no water. You can't put water on here. You've gotta go with just almost like a dry brush. And this kind of feathers it anyways. It feathers it and so, and again, damp. Dampness is what you want. So let me just show you up close how it's looking. See how I just kind of put it damp and you just get the lines of the stencil. So this is, t that was, that was putting in, and so you get a light line. This is taking out, and you get a dark line because you're getting what's behind it. Now, let's see, one more thing. This is kind of weird. So let me put some up there, just one more thing. Now we're good, right? All right, we've got a lot of time left. <laughs> so let me just put a little bit up here. Let me just see if this works. Let me take a drink first. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. I'm gonna try this up here. Mm. Any questions? You're all, I know you're just thinking, what the hell? Never, never gonna do that. <laughs> no, it's actually, it's a good thing. It can be a good thing. It's just, I use this stencil, it's a little bit different because it's giving me lines. It's kind of giving me, and actually later on, what I can also do is I can put in lines with my brush too. Let's say I wanted to all of a sudden then like extend this line or make another line. So I'll take my small round brush, my rigger brush, which by the way, you can get a set of six for $60. Um, if you're looking for your artist at Christmas, you know, how we're gonna do a line. So I'll maybe extend these lines through here and just keep them going. Let's see, maybe this one goes from light to dark. And so it looks like there's hay and stuff in there. And so you follow the line that you have there and see how I turn it from light to dark. And so you can do that too. You know, it's all kinds of things you can do with it and it's not realistic. It's just like, what is that? It's nothing that's, it's just a design thing. And actually I'm gonna take um, some white, white paint with a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna extend the, um, the lines of the, of the feathers now too. Because since it's, it's kind of what I'm going for is line work, um, then just go with it. Go with that kind of um, design. So I'm going to take white with light blue because that's what the, it's kind of a teal color anyways. And so I'm just going to extend those lines from the, from his feathers. And maybe this one goes yellow. So I'll use the yellow with white. That's what abstract is. It's not, you're not trying to follow the photograph. You're not trying to make it look like a realistic. It's you're trying to make it a design, some kind of design that looks nice. And it's, it's hard to teach um, abstract because there's no, in the, basically you have to know design of, of uh, lights and darks and uh, like a good composition and stuff like that. You still need all that stuff. But, um, so you have to learn how to do realistic stuff first and get a good design. And then you take it to abstract where you kind of just 
keep the um, design good, but it's not an object that's supposed to look like something. It's basically elements of the painting that look interesting. Like this line work is not, it's not now it's supposed to look a little bit more interesting. So look, if you look at this, this is more of a design. It's like, what is this? It's nothing. It's just a design sense that is in part of the light part. And this is in the light part. And then there's a dark, well, actually, no, it's the light part because it, the, the rooster is dark here. And same thing with what it is afternoon. It's basically just a design. It's nothing. It's not even chicken wire, though this is supposed to look like chicken wire, but you know, that, that's pretty thick chicken wire. But just to give it a design, a kind of a look. And this one is just line work. And so it gives it motion. As a matter of fact, this almost looks like a wing here, <laughs> like he's spreading his wing up there. So I'm going to go through in here and just do some calligraphy almost here. Do a little circle there. Make a circle here. I wish I had the one picture, I sold the one painting of the um, pelican flying through and I just made it uh, more of a frilly kind of like things happening in there. And so it's like, again, it's a design. All right, so let me show you this close up and I think we're probably going to be good here. This looks like it maybe needs a little bit of erasing. Right here, just gonna take that down a little bit. Have your eye directed back into this area because he's pretty much the center of interest and so you're just doing this stuff and you're keeping your you know your value pattern that's still there it's just that this is some these are lines and there could be triangles in there you can make rectangles you can do circles in there i've seen a couple of people do round circles and um just as a background so i would love to see what you guys do you know if you want to do circles and stuff you can just cut out um you know, cardboard, you can just, uh, real thin cardboard or paper, you can take an exacto knife, um, find something that has circles in it, something that has holes in it, and then just rub out with your magic eraser. Or just take your magic eraser and like the edge of something, you can just make straight lines and you just rub it like this. Pretty much, um, here's this wet one. So let's say if I want to keep on going with this, I just make a straight line and then just, oh, that has a dark in it. I'm just going to take a little nice line there and see how it makes a like, straight line there. Again, I want this little loop-de-loop -loop here. Hold on. And I didn't know in the beginning of this what I was going to actually do for the abstract part of it. I'm just letting, leaving it up to my imagination when I get to there. And again, it is kind of um, tricky sometimes, but that's how you learn. You know, you may ruin a couple paintings doing this, but hey, you learn by, by your mistakes. <laughs> and so I'm just going to come in here, make a couple loop-de-loops in there. You don't do it and you can't you know you can't learn anything if you don't make a couple of mistakes once in a while and just figure out how to do it i have not taken ever taken a class on abstract or how to do this i'm just kind of i take it and play it by ear and then just see what happens and i've ruined a couple of paintings already <laughs> by doing this but hey it's fun right have fun have a glass of wine or a can of beer and have have at it I'm doing a bunch of circles now. Here, look at that. All right, I think we're going to take the tape off and we'll have another Wednesday or another Thursday night behind us. And so next Thursday, we still have a class. We're going to have another one. I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. Um, and next week will probably be the last one I do here in my studio, and then I'll be in my home studio. So maybe we'll have a different kind of look. And so we'll see how that works. Martina's got a question. Martina's got a question? Okay. Does a does a plastic netting uh, onions bag work? Is it? Yep, yep, definitely. Um, screens, like a screen, like screen, like a um, window screen works sometimes. Um, netting, definitely netting. Um, uh, anything that has texture, you know, you can just use that as um, uh, look around your house and see what you have that has holes in it or something. The, a grid on it, like the back of a, um, you know, uh, <laughs> um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Yeah, anything you can find that has something on a grid in it, that's that's great. You just go ahead and use that. It just has to have holes or, like I said, um, a a um, screen. It's a perfect thing. But the netting of an onion bag, yeah, definitely, that would work great. If you find things, um, let us know. Post them on my Facebook page and let me know because I love to tell people what they can use for the stencils and stuff. And again, stencilgirlproducts.com is where I get my stencils. And... Um, here, let me just show you what we did with the other ones, just so you have them all, so you can see all the different different things I had done with the stencils. 
Now you can't see that one, but here, let me go to my end screen here, guys. So here, get this one. We'll put this one right over here. And you can see. So there we go. Another Thursday night, we did some roosters. We uh, painted some roosters, and this one's kind of interesting. Um, it's not my best, but um, it gives you an idea of how to use a stencil. And um, I probably have to go in here uh, later on. I'm going to put another thing, I think, another feather there just to kind of straighten it out. And again, if you do make mistakes and you feel like it's something got to, you can go back in. I can put back a wash back in there. Let's say I wanted to make this dark again. I can easily go back right in there and make that dark again. So for this edition of Painting with David. <laughs> so um, thanks, guys. Thanks again for coming by on a Thursday night. And next week, um, look for my what we're going to do on Tuesday. Get my newsletter. If you don't get my newsletter, I'll tell your friends about my newsletter. And then maybe they'll paint with you too. And so until next